Ken Whiting here with Paddle TV. Now, inflatable kayaks have been booming in popularity, and for good reason. They knock down a couple of the biggest barriers to getting into kayaking. First being, how do you transport a kayak to and from the water? And second being, where do you store a kayak if you don't have a lot of space? Well, with the inflatable kayak, if it can fit in a bag that size, those aren't issues anymore. Today we're going to be doing a full gear review of the Advanced Elements Advanced Frame Kayak. This is an entry level inflatable kayak. I've never tried it before. I'm gonna take it on the water. You're gonna follow me and I'm gonna let you know, is it worth it? So the Advanced Frame Inflatable Kayak retails for 540 US dollars. It's 10 feet, five inches long. It's 32 inches wide. It weighs 36 pounds, which is 16 kilograms, and it has a capacity of 300 pounds, which is 136 kilograms. It's primarily designed for recreational paddling in sheltered water, which means water that's protected from wind and waves. So the advanced frame is a hybrid of a folding frame kayak and an inflatable kayak because it has built-in aluminum ribs in the bow and stern. It has three layers of material for puncture resistance, a high back seat, soft carry handles, bungees for stowage, inflatable combing so that you can use a spray skirt if you want, a tracking fin, and it comes with a carrying bag and a repair kit, but the pump is sold separately for $20 to $40 depending on the model. That was incredibly easy to inflate. I've never done it before, and literally five minutes, my first time, it's ready to go. Uh, it's got seven valves, seven chambers to inflate. You follow the numbers, do one through seven, you pump them up to the pressure that the instructions tell you, and you've got a kayak ready to go. Clip in the seat, boom. Uh, now that it's together, the one thing I'm worried about is how soft feeling the kayak is. You only pump this thing up to about one or two PSI per chamber, and, which is not very much pressure. Uh, some of the, the higher end, much more expensive inflatable kayaks, you pump up to around 10 or, or more PSI. So uh, it's noticeably soft. I'm wonder, wondering if that's gonna translate into you know, a flimsy feel in the water. We'll soon find out. But that being said, one of the things they do offer for this kayak is an upgrade. And the upgrade is a uh, drop stitched floor or even a, something called a backbone, which provides the floor with a lot more rigidity and will really stiffen this kayak out. And I don't have that for this one. So this is a good test for the base model, but um, that might be a good uh, upgrade option depending on how this test goes. Well, let's get to the water. Well, for your benefit, I've now been paddling for eight hours, about 30 miles. Okay, 45 minutes and maybe a mile, but long enough to have have developed a really good impression for what this kayak is all about. And here's what I can tell you, tell you starting with performance or handling of the kayak. You know, I was worried that uh, because of the low pressure that this kayak takes, that one to two PSI in the chambers, I was worried it would it'd be feel really flimsy. And well, no, it doesn't feel as, as firm as a hard shell kayak. I didn't expect it to, but it doesn't feel as flimsy as I thought it was gonna feel either. In fact, it feels pretty, pretty good. Uh, I think most paddlers, rec paddlers, uh, would hop in this and not really notice how you know, how uh, soft the kayak is. And they'd probably notice it purely from a comfort standpoint that it's actually pretty nice and comfortable. So, you know, it's not, not really a big issue for this type of a kayak. Otherwise, it tracks beautifully. It holds a line very well for a 10-foot kayak. It's very maneuverable as a 10-foot kayak, which is a fairly short uh, touring kayak or wreck kayak. 
it should be maneuverable. It should be easy to turn. And it does both those things very well, holds a straight line and turns very well when you need it to turn. So it handles great. That's all I can say about that. It's what you'd expect from a kayak of this nature. Uh, when it comes to stability, that's another key factor for a wreck kayak. A wreck kayak should be very stable. It should make the paddler, even if it's a first time paddler, feel comfortable and confident. And this does it. It has wonderful uh, primary stability, which is the stability of the kayak when you're just sitting flat. Right now, as I sit flat, I mean, I can drop my paddle, close my eyes, it doesn't really matter. It's stable. And I've got nothing, there's nothing bad to say about that whatsoever. Uh, it also has reasonable secondary stability. Now, secondary stability is when you tilt the kayak on edge, I can just hold this edge very easily. Not that you really need to do that very much for wreck kayaking. You might not ever find yourself doing that, but it does have good secondary stability as well. Comfort. How comfortable is this kayak? Well, because it's soft, it's actually very comfortable. And the tubes on the side, what these tubes, something I didn't think about is these tubes on the side actually provide support for your legs inside this boat and for your butt. So your, your butt isn't gonna be shifting around in this kayak, which is actually very nice. The high back seat is, uh, is comfortable. It's uh, something to note about that is I'm wearing a normal life paddling life jacket the flotation in the back here actually sits against the seat and so that's not ideal. There are life jackets, uh, paddling specific life jackets that remove the flotation from the lower back so that it doesn't, you don't have anything between you and the seat. And so that's something to consider getting if, uh, if you got this kayak or any kayak with a high back seat. Um, otherwise, uh, when we talk about comfort, <laughs> I'm too big for this kayak and I'm not too heavy for this kayak. I'm 200 pounds and I don't feel any problem weight wise. I, I could be 20 pounds heavier and still I think I'd be totally fine. Uh, but I'm six foot two and I'm a bit long in the leg and it's a little bit uncomfortable. I'm too tall for this kayak. The kayak really narrows at the front. My feet are squeezed into that small space. So definitely not a tall person's boat. Um, so a shorter person, I think it would be a very, a very comfortable kayak for someone maybe under six feet. Um, durability wise, you know, it's hard having spent only 45 minutes in this boat it's hard to I haven't had the chance to really put it to the test but I really do like how it's built the build quality seems very solid I don't see this thing falling apart just from unless you abuse it uh, and if you take care of this thing I think it would it'll last a long time what I like is the outer shell is really a protective a durable protective outer shell and then the chambers are inside and so you have to, you'd have to really do something, do some damage. You'd have to do something foolish almost um, to cause this thing uh, some real damage. So, you know, time will tell durability wise, but I like what I'm seeing so far. Ah, well, a good day on the water. Here's what I can tell you about the Advanced Elements Advanced Frame Kayak to kind of summarize uh, my feelings about it. This is a great boat. You know, it's a great entry level recreational kayak for someone, I, mean, I would say, you know, your average adult to, sm to small adult. Uh, anyone, let's say below six feet tall, uh, this would be a great recreational kayak if you're looking for a boat to stick to calm, sheltered, you know, uh, water that's protected from, from wind and waves, uh, this isn't a boat to take out into rough conditions. Even though it's designed to have uh, a skirt, it could use a skirt, it's not something I would actually do myself. This is for calm, uh, sheltered waters. Uh, the value at 540 bucks for what you get i think it's it's amazing it really you can't you're going to be hard pressed to beat this 
Uh, I mean, it is a $540 kayak, so yes, you can spend more and get a higher performing kayak. You can get a kayak that's more comfortable, that has more features, absolutely. But for the price, a wonderful kayak. If you paddled, you know, if you started paddling more and more, I think the upgrade option for the floor, getting that stiffer, that rigid floor, would be a worthwhile investment. But um, otherwise, I, I really enjoyed paddling this boat today. Uh, if you want more information about this kayak, there's a link in the description box down below. And uh, otherwise, you know, stay tuned. We got lots more gear reviews, tips, and all sorts of uh, interesting paddling content coming your way. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. If you've tried one of these boats before, and let us know, let everybody know what you think of them. Or if you have any questions about this, leave a comment and I'll get to that as soon as I can. And so until next time, I'm Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and we'll see you on the water.